Hello, everyone. Yes. Hi, guys. Welcome. Welcome to our webinar, Pascal and I. I have the honor of being your host today. We're going to be looking at an introduction to impact production. So let me just, I'll just move the webinar screens and everything over to the side so I can concentrate on my screen here and on you guys. Pascal has joined me today on this webinar about impact production. Pascal will answer all of your questions. If you have any, just write them in the question menu and I'll just read them and write them in. She will answer them during the webinar. Uh, he will also be responsible if there is some questions that we can answer during the webinar. Uh, he will just interrupt me, simply just interrupt me. Right, Pascal? I will try to interrupt you, Nikolai. Ah, ah. <laughs> Tough as it is, yeah, exactly. That's a hard one. But, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. But it's, it's two o'clock, and um, happy to have you guys here. Today we have a mix of people. We have some, uh, I can see we have some long-term users. You guys that are long-term users, experts, maybe you won't learn that much today. Uh, but we have a bunch of newer users as well. And of course, also a lot of people who you know, don't have the software today. And this would be very, uh, very relevant for those new users, and especially those of you who don't have this today. Because we're simply going to introduce you to some of the functions and what impact production is and so on. So let's jump into it. The agenda for this webinar, if you're uh, uh, sharp, you can see on the side, we have a little building that's building itself here. To the side, well, that, that's part of the agenda, really. But uh, what is impact production? That's going to be the first thing. And uh, then we're going to go in and actually look at the video. So we're going to do a live webinar, we're going to do a video. That's because I can in one minute show you what it takes to show you in a one hour demo. But the demo we'll do anyways after, of course. Then we'll do a, a it's, it's going to be like a little nerdy slide. What is impact? SQL and stuff like that. For many of you guys, you don't care about that. You just want to know how it works and if it can help your business. Then uh, a little bit about the planning process. Maybe we call it the impact pretest planning process, but it's actually it's a pretty basic planning process where you you, uh, you work away from direction and backwards. Uh, but more about that, of course, later. Then a little bit about our project manager, software, task planner, transport planner. And a little bit of info on element control, our mobile app and tracking. And after that, we'll jump into a live demo. And I have the same building as you see me into to, to the side of the screen. I have that, and uh, we'll, we'll plan a floor or something. We'll plan a floor, floor for erection, uh, cast planning, and uh, transport. So that's the goal for today for these next. 45 minutes, one hour, depends on how much I talk. Now, Pascal already made fun of that. So let's see <laughs> if we keep on time. But it takes us into what is impact production. That's why you guys are here. Uh, either you have impact production or you don't have it. If you already have it, maybe you want to figure out how to use it better. If you don't have it, will it add any value to your business? So simply put, it's a planning and tracking system. Specialized pre test function. It is not an ERP system, even though some people might call it an ERP. We call it a precast planning system. So we call it a PPS instead of an ERP, something like that. But, uh, even though it works a lot like an ERP, of course. It's very customizable. For example, the casting beds, casting tables, these kind of things we set up for a factory. We do bird's eye views. So your factory is visual, 3D. You can see your elements, your projects uh, across your factories and so on and so forth. And uh, we have some different applications. I just took some pictures here. These are actually the pictures taken directly from our website. Um, but the pictures are made from screenshots from the software. It's the project manager for managing your projects, of course, resource manager for managing your business or multiple projects at the same time across your whole business, across all of your casting uh, locations, casting divisions, if you have one in the factory. Cast planning, you can see in the picture, it shows uh, the 3D building, 
is, this is going to show you live as well. Element controls digitally, of course, and mobile units. We can do some cost calculation and uh, transport planning as well, and tracking everything on the go with the phones. So basically, that's what in my production is a planning and tracking system. What makes it special then? Well, let's take a look at this one minute video. I'll lean back a little bit, but I probably will talk anyways during the whole video. Um, but it's just a very nice way to show you guys while we have their attention. You know, a short overview of this. And well, I think it's a, it's a, it's a great way to see the video of this. We have a 3D model here imported. That 3D model you can use to do cost planning of any site, the any sites over there. 3D transport planning, and uh, these tender quantities here, these are for sales, for example. You do the erection planning of the building, use that to plan the cast and the transport, as well as we can do later. You can add your cranes to check if it's okay, do project follow ups, and, and uh, see if anything is late or anything like that. Use your mobile phone here on the screen. It's the actual screen and then the screen of the phone will record uh, your phone screen. And even as I mentioned before, you can manage multiple projects at the same time in multiple factories at the same time as well. So your whole business if you have a larger, if you have a larger company. Follow-ups and uh, across the business as well. And as it says here, for more information on each. Feature. We have other videos as well, but we have it already in here in the webinar. So, for more information, you stay in the webinar for the next half hour and you'll get more information. So, as I promised, I will write one minute, maybe one minute, 30 second video. Now you know what is impact production. And let's, let's, we have, we have an hour. So, let's, let's just do a little bit more. So, and I want to show you guys. In action, of course, as well. So, what is impact? This is the nerdy slide I warned you guys about. I try to keep it uh, interesting. Impact, <laughs> as it says, is an SQL database. It unites the three areas of precast, what we identify as the three areas design, detailing, production, projects. That's, that's, that's how impact is structured. So basically, impact can join in these three things. What we're looking at today in impact production is the projects and production. When we say production, we also mean transportation, direction, and uh, uh, tracking, of course. We just call it production uh, in impact. So if all the stakeholders are connected. You can host it on the cloud to access from everywhere, anywhere, any device. Unless you do the detailing, of course, in design, you don't need the CAD or the BIM skills or anything like that, any software skills. Before that, and then uh, I'm getting uh, to know that the sound is bad, but maybe it's better now. Pascal, you could just yell at me if the sound is worse or better. Is the sound better now, Pascal? A little bit. A little bit. I have a fan standing. But you have to be close at your camera, at least. I'll be close. I'll do like this, guys. Oh, no, 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 no. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if I lean too much backward, you guys can't hear me properly. So, sorry. If you didn't hear the other stuff I said, basically, Impact can do everything you need. Drawing, project management, production, tracking, transportation, and it can connect everything as well in what's called the SQL database. To use impact, you don't need any CAD skills, any BIM skills or anything like that. Uh, only if you're doing the impact detailing, uh, impact design software, of course. But today we're talking about the planning software. So no previous skill needed other than you need to know how to plan precast elements, of course. But we'll leave that up to you guys. Not one size fits all. It's completely customizable to your factory, first idea of the factory, of course. So. That's it for the nerdy slide. 
Oh, wait, no, no, wait a little bit. What, what about the import? Uh, we are we are working on an IC import, isn't? Are we? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Imports, <laughs> import, very important. You guys are looking at 3D models. Why is the 3D model? Where does the 3D model come from? Uh, if we look at that one here, on the projects, on the design, on the production, everything is 3D. Where does it come from? And well, either you're using a detailing software, then you don't have to do anything. Or you're using Tecla, Reddit, then we have connections for you. Let's say you're using something else like uh, Nemesis All Plan, something like that. Then we have a new redesigned, uh, completely new design IC import just on the steps coming later this year as well. So no matter how you want to do it, you can get this in. Uh, with one exception, maybe being that you're thinking, yeah, but I don't even have a 3D model. How, how am I going to do this then? Well, then we have an import uh, called Linked, in where you can take from an Excel sheet and actually get the geometry in by just inputting uh, the sizes and so on. It doesn't look quite as sexy as these ones, but the functionality is pretty much the same, anyways. So you should be covered in any case there. I took this one uh, history with me. Sometimes it's just nice to know, but just just to know that that Shoesoft, of course, is not a new player in the field. Uh, we've been here for, for more than 30 years, with Impact even. We've been here for more than 40 years, if, if you count all the software with us as well. Back then, we were just called Skanska Software. Uh, but Impact Production or Impact Planning actually had its first proper finished software debut 12 years, uh, 11 years ago, in 2012. That means that's when it was finished. Software company, as a software company, your software is never finished. We update it at least four times a year. But just keeping in mind that this is extremely modern and that the first iteration was actually only 10, 12 years ago. So you get something with 40 years of experience, but it, it, it's new. But well, not so new that it's not properly worked through, of course. But um, we had our 30 year anniversary for the first release last year for the beginning of the work on Impact two years ago. So that was very recent. But but other than that, you know, it's just saying, okay, then we have this, then we have that. Now we can do the mobile app we had in 2014 and so on. So, as I promised in the beginning here, the planning process. We call it impact because planning process. But this, what this is, is just a super, super simplified planning process of any construction project. Where we go from erection, meaning that we start at the end. You know, we start where we told our customer, we'll deliver this project after checking the numbers. We tell them we can deliver the project uh, have it have it finished all the 10 floors or whatever we're doing by uh, the end of September. And then we work our way backwards into when does do we need to transport it? and when do we need to produce and when do we need to create the drawings. So basically going from erection to transport to producing to drawing. That's the planning phase. So working our way backwards. Then the execution phase, of course, is working our way forwards, actually doing the work, finishing the drawings producing the elements, putting them on storage, transporting them, erecting them on site, of course. And that's that's the way that our software actually takes care of these things, if you want to use you know, the whole flow of the processor. And that's what I'm going to show you just in a couple of minutes here. So that's the, the, that's the planning process. And hopefully, you guys, you have something similar. Um, you might only be thinking of some of these or maybe you have 20 points instead of four points here but the thing is that the process is the same anyways you need to build uh, a house a tunnel a bridge something like this and uh, you need to plan it out first and then you will do the work but an impact is both about planning and doing the work so just a little bit briefly about the modules and then we'll jump straight into them afterwards our impact project manager 
frame placement and different load check. Very, very simple. I think I will show you this one as well. Select the crane input from the crane supplier. Select where on the site you want to build it. Uh, put it. We have this grid you can turn on with one meter distances. And then, well, the game is to get the building to light up green. If it's green, it's okay. Can we put a smaller crane and still make everything green? We save money. So it's a quite a simple game, but uh, but a nice one to play. Um, erection sequencing and planning. This one you saw in the beginning. We'll do this as well. It's nice to bring on a meeting with your client and say, well, we're going to build up this. This building here or this space of that building there or these uh, 20 villas in, the, in, in this area of this project, whatever it is, uh, or this this part of the, the viaduct, uh, it doesn't have to be buildings. The, the example today would be these buildings, but that's just because that's that's where my mine and Pascal's uh, past are, and that's what we are used to working with. Rough and detailed planning. Rough planning meaning dates. Um, detailed planning meaning you jump a little bit more into where, where as well. Well, planning is when, detailed planning is where. Status machines, you can see it lights up with different colors, ready for production, planned for production, produced, and like a custom made new status here. You can see oh, two elements are produced, they're orange, a few are planned, and uh, the ones that are blue are ready to be produced, but they're not planned yet. The resource manager is basically this you see here is the same as the status machine. But check on my uniform. Two seconds, seconds guys, there's some audio issues. There we, there we go. go. Maybe, Maybe you can. Uh, Five seconds. Let me do it like this. There we go. Pascal, can you confirm? Is the audio okay now? Perfect. Okay, guys. So that was just to prove that this is indeed a live webinar. Just to make sure that you guys are. <laughs> Are paying attention. So great. That's oh, too bad that we had a little bit of issues there. So, but the resource manager, well, let's go back to where we were, the status machine. And then we go to the resource manager. Basically, the resource manager here, what it does is it can filter out and show us projects across our whole business and all the projects we're doing today. So let me just do like this. Pascal's head is much smaller than mine. There we go. Um, so basically, in the resource manager, you can control all of these projects in your whole business at once. 3D cast planning, of course, like we showed in the video. 3D transport planning as well, with different types of stacks, in loaders, A-frames, and so on. I'm going to show you guys just in a minute also. And uh, Holocore, this example also. Then when you get into the process and you're doing the work, then we have this digital element control as well. You do it on your phone, your tablet, you could do it on the PC as well, but it's just easier to do it on the phone and the tablet. Does the element have the right size? Is there anything wrong with the element? Take a picture, upload it, who needs to fix it? Do we need to produce a new element? All of these things you can control through this app here. Impact Go, the mobile app is called. Just a little bit few of screenshots from Impact Go here is somewhat like this where it looks. You have these three elements, they have this status, this color. What do we want to do with them? Once you produce them, you track them out to the storage. Here is a picture of from a customer with all cores on the storage side. You can, for example, scan with the phone, say output these uh, 
elements on storage number six and everything puts in the system, everybody knows to pick up the elements on storage yard number six. When they are put on the way bill and the truck is coming to get them, we'll do the same. Now they're put on the truck. Now we load them on the truck so they're on the way. When they get delivered, again with the phone, say you've delivered them, nobody needs to touch anything on the computer here. Everything's get updated automatically, the color changes and so on and so forth, just using your phones. Now, live demo. So we'll go to the top. We will add a crane, a web crane. We will have it here. We'll put it a little bit closer than we did before. There we go. And then we can see, okay, these are still not approved. Well, what we can also do is, well, let's say we'll use it two places. Maybe we need to move it. Maybe maybe we do a mobile crane and we'll move it to the front afterwards instead. And then we'll move it here. And perfect. So now that's sorted anyways, but we'll start with the crane up here. And then we want to start building from here. Or maybe we'll start with the grain here, it depends a little bit on how, how and when do we want to build this front here, actually. And it might also be we'll just add two cranes. So I will go into the view here. I'll just hide the cranes. I'll go back. I want to look at my building so I can see a little bit more here. There we go. And then I will go to my status again. And since I have my crane up here, the other one down here, I want to start from the furthest away from the crane when I'm actually planning my project. So let's go ahead and now do this. So maybe I will start from here, actually. Then we could take this one, but maybe because now I know I need to do two cranes. I don't want to, I don't want to keep moving backwards and forwards. So maybe it's going to be something like this here. There we go. So that one gets put up lastly. Where's the last one? Add elements here means add them to make the erection sequence. We want to add the wall panels as well, doing a little bit the same. You can see here, it's actually quite basic because I'm just clicking in the order that I want to add these ones in. Columns. From here, beams here, hollow core here and here, add elements. Then we have some slabs. Those are the last ones the balconies will put up. And that's it. Now I've selected actually the whole floor and we have all the elements down here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put an erection crew on this and apply. So when I put an erection crew on and I do this erection planning, you can see erection sequence 20, erection sequence 7, erection sequence 6. This is the ES one here. So let's simulate this one. Don't show the unplanned ones. Play, we zoomed out a little bit. So we can see we start building from over here, leave a space because I just couldn't carry those elements with the crane in this case here. And that goes up last. And then we go ahead and put all the internal elements in as well. You can attach cranes to specific elements, specific floors, specific faces as well. Uh, in this case here, I was just checking the locations I need to have, of course. So you can add, do it more complex or less complex and so on. But now you can have this meeting with your clients where you say, well, is this how we're going to build it? And so on and so forth. And in this case here, I want to add in my um, uh, form slab as the last ones. So we'll just add those as well. 
leave them to the erection crew also. It also might be that our client will say, add the form slabs before you do the balconies. You know, uh, you, can, you can change anything here. We go into the simulation again, hit play, fast forward a little bit. Now we'll see how it's being built. And then no matter how many elements, you know, you just keep doing the same thing here. So that's great there. So now I have what I need to make the software really work for me. And I will jump into what we call IDs. I'll put it next to my 3D model. And you can see here to the side, plan drawing date, plan production date, plan delivery date, plan direction date. So if we go in and we say, take all of these elements here, help me plan. So in, in my case here, I want to calculate the erection dates. My, I promised my customer that the first elements I'm going to erect on the 30th of June, and then increasing it means that we'll start erection on the 30th of June. You could also say decrease, which means that you will, you will, you will finish there. So we'll hit apply, and you can see it moves, and it changes day when we can't make any more, so it goes up last until the 10th in that case. When I hit save here, impact's gonna backwards calculate for me, when does the drawing need to be ready? When does the element need to be produced and so on? So here you can see, if I wanna do elements on the third, on the 30th here, then they need to be produced by the 28th. If they need to be produced, uh, stored by the 28th. If they need to be stored by the 28th, they need to be produced by the 27th. If we want to produce them by the 27th, we have a rule internally in the company that says the drawings need to be finished X amount of days before. So the actual drawings need to be finished by the 16th, which is two days from now. So for example, you can go in and you can say, if you were a, a, a detailer or a project manager, you can just go in and say, plan drawing date, these eight elements here need to be finished by the 16th. So very easy to split up and just check exactly what it is you need to do at any given point. Same thing with production and uh, erection and so on. So to not jump too much into detail with this, we'll move forward because we did the rough planning. We have all the dates now. Um, and we'll go into cast planning. And then I'll take my planned production date maybe. So basically the 27th means the latest on the 27th. So it depends a little bit on my calendar. I'll go in and I'll select my wall factory. And um, you can see here, this was last month, probably when I, uh, when I planned something here last time. But if I go to today, then we can see there's nothing planned today. When is the next time I need to plan something for this? The 27th. So now I need to decide, am I doing this on the 27th or am I doing it as soon as possible so I can fit something else in? Maybe I want to do it on the 27th because then I can do something else before this. So it depends a little bit on how you guys work and how you want to work. In this case here for my factory, I have three tables, vibration tables, something like that. And then I have this area here. It depends on how you want to build it up. But these three are regular wall tables. So I will go in and I'll say, take them all, produce them. And then you can select how should impact produce them. Well, first of all, if it takes more than one day, that's okay. If you want to put more than one element, uh, if you have small elements like beams or something like that, wall beams, then you can produce more uh, on top of each other or whatever you call it. You could do it by the size or the erection sequence or the erection sequence reversed. Here importantly is the fewer lifts you have on your element, the cheaper it is to produce it, of course. So you want to lift the element from the casting bed to the stack. The stack gets put on the truck and then you lift it from the stack to the side. So two times. Uh, depending on your factory, it's either reverse erection sequence or erection sequence or you can do one element at a time. We'll hit start here in this case, and impact plants it first. So here, I just started as soon as I could. 
seeing if we finish up. If we look at our calendar, I hit today, you can see it takes these three tables today, plus a little bit tomorrow. If I go to my detailed view, I can ask it to show me uh, some specific things. So for example, show me these three tables only, not number four. And I want to see three days at a time. So I look two days ahead to see if I need to coordinate something, production with another project or something else I'm making in the same project, for example. If I go into cast, for example, everything is yellow here. They're fine planned. I can go check my walls here. Those are not planned. Doing the same thing here. In my case here, I only have one wall factory. So I might use the same tables that I'm using to sandwich panels for the walls. But that'll mean that from the 15th, in this case here, on table number two and number three, because now I can see what I'm doing as well, I want to make those. So two and three, because I don't want to mix sandwich and solid walls up. There might be a lot of rules. You do it like you do it, of course. So these are simply just examples. The elements change color, the elements gets planned. And again, it's the exact same thing. If I go into the pre-stressed slabs and hollow cores, we go into our hollow core factory instead and say, take my hollow cores. We'll wait with the double T's here. Take my hollow core. I don't I don't mind how I select them. Do the erection sequence reversed because that fits with how I'm lifting them. In this case, use one, two, three as well. And again, I just want to produce these as soon as possible, even though I don't have to until the third. But we'll get them on there. The same thing, these guys here. I will just need number four instead, because that one is for those. So um, I hope you guys get the point here is that basically we just make this direction sequencing, then you're free to plan everything. If you don't, if you don't, um, what's it called? If the dates don't match up, it'll warn you. It'll tell you the dates don't match up. Are you sure you want to do this? But in my case here, everything's perfect. I have plenty of time. So, and it's the same exact same thing again with the balconies and uh, with the other elements uh, there as well. But in this case, I don't wanna, I don't wanna keep doing the same thing. So let's go in and let's put some elements on some trucks instead and on some stacks. So if I jump back to my sandwich panels and I select them all, now you'll start to see some nice tricks again. Here, if we do, We'll do inloaders for our sandwich panels. This one here starts to become where it, it starts to become something that adds a lot of value to you guys. The reverse direction sequence, don't think about anything else. Just make sure I only have to lift my elements once off the truck. And that means again, as few lifts as possible. You have your inloader in the system, it could take a maximum of 30 tons in this case, no more than 10 elements. You can see that the load and delivery dates are already set because of the planning we did before. You can set times on it later if you want. And then just hit it, put the whole thing on it. And now it says, well, are you sure you wanna do this because you will have a little bit of an issue with uh, these and these dates? Do you want it to automatically update your dates? In this case, I don't want to, that is fine. And now it's made us four inloaders. One with nine elements on it, one with seven elements on it, and one with uh, four elements on it. So, for example, we'll see this one here. Well, you have the element split, you'll have the center of gravity, and these are put in like this very nicely. And if you notice the first one we had before, there were some red ones. Red means a warning. So it might say, you need to be careful a little bit here with how you want to place these elements here. There's either something with the size or the orientation, and then it asks you, please, please check through if that's okay. 
in my case here, this is just fine. These ones here are where we can put our walls on the inloader. In the case of the third load, you'll have an element going through the wall. For me, I'm using one template for everything just to make it easy for myself to plan. But that's perfectly fine because I can see here right now that before I load this one, number four, the number three truck, I just, I'm just not going to add that extra piece of wall to the inloader. Everything's perfect. We go to the walls. I'm going to do some new stacks here, but we're going to take A-frames instead. The same principle again. Notice how the load and delivery dates have changed since we did the sandwich panels, right? Uh, because we're building it in the order that we're building it in. We'll have the same date again. And now it's made some A-frames instead. So here we'll see the first one, four elements. And if you notice, if we zoom in here, erection sequence number 21, 22, 23. So if I select this one, this is the one that goes off the truck first, the one that we need to lift off first. That is the one on the outside. The second one then, is that this one? No, of course it isn't. It's this one over here. So let me click it here. That's the second one to go up. The third one should be this one. It is. The fourth one is this one. So we zigzag lift it off, of course, to keep the center of gravity. Nothing's tipping over. Everything is where it should be. Let me just do quick one with the hollow cords also. And we'll look at some trucks for you guys. Again, the same principles. I'm just doing the exact same thing again and again. Just some different um, examples, of course. The erection sequence reversed. And now we'll need to, to keep a little bit of an eye on this guy here because we have a short element here. But we told the computer, use the erection sequence. So in this case here, this is a great stack. In this case here, maybe not so good. We don't want that here at the bottom. Maybe we can live with lifting that element twice. Let's move it upwards then. So you could do something like this where you where you where you say move it upward in the stack. So it moves the order of when you lift the thing. So basically now we've told the computer, give me the most optimized way of doing it. But then looking with my human eyes, my expert eyes, now I'm saying, okay, we'll need to move this upward. And then, then it's fine. We're still looking at cast. We could look at the transport status. And we've done the stack, sorry. We'll look at the stack. You can see there's different colors according to the different colors of the different stacks. And as I promised before, we've done the stacking. If I look at my floor one here, we can also see, okay, what's been actually planned, what hasn't been. We can filter out on the side about what's been planned, what hasn't been planned. You don't have to rely on your eyes only. And uh, in my case, now I want to put the inloaders on inloaders. These are just stacks that we can put on the storage yards. You can even do time intervals if you want to deliver it with an hour interval, two hours interval. So you can make sure that you can erect as much as possible. We'll do the inloader. What does it say? Capacity is lower than your, uh, the capacity on the inloader that you're trying to put it on. We can just put it on a different template we have here. So one truck for each in loader, truck one, two, three, stack one, two, three. But now we'll do as well these um, these A-frames here. And in that case, I think we could do, it, you can probably do two maybe, but it depends on the weight. It'll do it for us anyways. So it said, well, number four has to be in on, on its own because the weight, if we look at the weight here, it's 30, 23 tons and number five is 23 tons as well so that would mean we have to load the truck with 45 tons maybe a little too much uh, but it says that well the one you have with 23 here and then you have the one here that only is five tons with only one element on it we can load those on one truck for you so how does that look well we can go to this one here and then see well oh it looks quite good 
we have the, the trailer here and the truck will be in the front, of course, but it's all about the elements. It's not about how the truck actually looks. Same thing with number four here. You can even take it and move it back and forth if you want to if you want to handle something with your center of gravity or something like that. So let's do the last one. Maybe we forgot about the hollow core. Let's just add those. We will do horizontal. Okay. It says well, you can put number stack number seven and stack number eight on truck number six. And then it asks us, well, we can put them behind each other. Do you want to do it like this? Well, again, it depends. It depends. What's the best for us? So in this case here, well, I can see maybe I don't want to do it like this. Also, there's a little bit of a warning with my front axle pressure here. So maybe I want to place them near the back of the truck and next to each other instead. So you just do it. So simple as that, just move it around. So now if I look, I zoom in, there's no problem with my axle pressure anymore. The center of gravity is a little bit to the back, but move it back and forth. What you do then is you print a report with a screenshot of this one on it so the guys can stack it easily. You print your element labels with the QR tags on it. You use your mobile phone to track the process. Um, you know, when the truck goes, so it'll automatically be set to now it's delivered. You can go in and check the dates, do the call off. You can see I didn't, I didn't do much with the dates and the times here. I just let it roll. But I think as far as an introduction goes from us, I think, I think that's probably it. What do you think, Pascal? Is, uh, is there any good questions coming in? Not so many. Yeah. And Pascal, he can't talk right now because I have his headset on, so he can only nod or something like that. Well, it's, uh, I think today we've just been unlucky, right? Bad, uh, bad luck on a live webinar. That's what happens. But uh, I think we managed to pull it off and hopefully, my fingers are crossed, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully you guys have been able to follow it and hear what I've been saying even though Pascal has been in here a couple of times saying, we can't hear anything, Nick. Um, I'll throw my headset in the trash and order a new one for you guys for the next webinar. But until then, take care. We'll see you in the next webinar. And um, well, if you want to know more before that, just, just hit us up. You have our numbers, you have our emails. We'll take a look together. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.